Author and illustrator Mo Willems has created beloved characters and sold millions of children's books. Now he's taking to the stage and making new kinds of work for both kids and grown-ups. Correspondent Paul Solman has the story. It's part of our ongoing series on arts and culture, Canvas. Hey! Where did the bus go? Now playing at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., a musical about a pigeon who really, really, really wants to drive a bus. Can I drive the bus? No, no. Based on a book by one of America's best-selling authors. My name is Mo Willems. I'm a banker. This Latter-day Dr. Seuss even spruced up the time-honored TV walking shot to cover our narration introducing him, letting his pigeon do the walking. Mo Willems has created over 50 books about characters from the boisterous bird to anxious elephant and upbeat piggy to abandoned knuffle bunny to Nanette's baguette. Willems is now the Kennedy Center's first education artist in residence, making music. His life's always better with an elephant in the room. Art. No, no, you with a pigeon musical. They're grown adults playing with puppets, yelling and screaming and running around. Pigeons cannot cry, drive a bus. Hopefully that's going to engender not just laughs on stage, but when the kids go home, the grown-ups will pick up a stuffed animal and pretend that it's a puppet and start to be silly again. I'm more interested in sparking some sort of creativity, some type of joy that happens after the show, after the performance, after you read the book. Is that why the drawings are so simple? Absolutely. Every one of my characters is designed so that a five-year-old can reproduce it. I want my books to be played, not just read. The most important part of the book, the heart of the book, is the audience reacting to what I've splattered on the page. And by audience, you don't just mean the kid. You mean the parent, or in my Absolutely. case, grandparent, who's reading it, acting it out, the voices. Hey, can I drive the bus? I need you, you are my orchestra. Right. And if I write a book called Happy Bunny Had a Happy Time in Happy Land, you're gonna read it, Happy Bunny Had a Happy Time, and then you skip a couple pages, oh, and you're the I've end. Been, I've been there. Right, we've all I've been, been there. there. But if I write something that jazzes you and gets you to get the shamectomy to start yelling and screaming and jumping up and down and maybe tickling or whatnot, now suddenly these books are magic. Willem's work is silly, sure, but it also explores questions central to kids. You're just dealing with fundamental things. Why are we here? Why are people nice? Why aren't people nice? Mm -hmm. What can I do? Can I drive a bus? Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus was Willem's first book back in 2003. So the pigeon was rejected by, and I tend to exaggerate, so we'll just cut the number in half, 23 billion publishers. <laughs> and they said the exact same thing as the publisher that took the book. They said it's unusual. They were all right. The question is, is unusual pejorative or is it positive? So why do they all say no? Well, because it's terrifying doing something that hasn't been done before, right? I mean, it's a book all in dialogue with sort of a chicken scratch drawing. The audience is told, has to yell no back at the book, but we never tell them that they need to do it. Also, it's a pigeon. It's a rat with wings. Like a children's book is supposed to be an adorable bear or a wonderful bunny, something that you want to hug and, nobody wants to hug and squeeze a pigeon. That first book earned Willems the first of three Caldecotts, the highest prize in kid lit. Pigeon just arrived one day in a sketchbook and literally the first drawing I made of the pigeon, the pigeon said, why are you drawing other things? He just, he was a jerk from day one. But you didn't, you didn't hear him say that you, we communicate through doodles, yeah. So part of the exploration for this play was for me to ask, who is this pigeon? Which is also me asking, who am I? Which is why I need to be with very close friends who can tell me the honest truth. Never heard a thing like that. Willems co-wrote the script with Tom Warburton, a friend since the two were animators 25 years ago, and an admirer of Willems' first film. Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! The Man Who Yelled. An animated film by me, Mo Willems. Mo was very good at branding. He was already Mo Willems even before he was doing he was doing his picture books. In that film, yeah, he must mention his name. I don't know how many times. Not just in that film, in everything he does, he mentions his name <laughs> over and over and over again. So yes, <laughs> that was the, that was just the start. Oh my goodness. 
Yes, a sheep! Over the years, the two collaborated on the Cartoon Network's short-lived Sheep in the Big City. When we would look at the ratings, you would get a five. That was the number of people watching it. It was an unpopular show. But their show, Codename Kids Next Door, was a hit. Willems went on to write for Sesame Street, for which he won six Emmys. The musical poses a different problem. How do you take a 40-page book about a pigeon not being able to drive a bus and turn it into an hour-long musical? Stick to a good story for kids, says Deborah Wicks Lapuma, who wrote the music. You can't linger in a moment for the sake of lingering in a moment or sounding beautiful. You know, the kids want to know what the story is and what's happening. What if I don't like school? Willem's work has always kept the child's point of view really front and center. Like Childhood is inherently unpleasant, and nothing is to your scale, right? The chairs, these chairs, are saying... Immense, yeah. they're, they're giant. They're saying, you don't belong here. You really shouldn't even be sitting here, yeah. right? And everything is big, because you don't know. You're new. And the grown-ups, they take you out of situations. Like if you're doing something and you're having fun, some giant pair of hands grabs you and picks you up and puts you in another room and you get in trouble for complaining? Artist in residence Willems in an upcoming Kennedy Center project is painting abstractions based on Beethoven symphonies to be performed by the National Symphony Orchestra. I like to jump off the diving board and halfway through ask myself, do you know how to swim? I knew nothing about music. I'm, was, I am painting on a scale I've never painted before. Uh, but you know, there's no wrong way to hear a symphony. And there's no wrong way to express yourself. From Beethoven to Bird. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Paul Salman, a new friend of Willem's. Crack! an old friend of his books in Washington, D.C., and my house outside Boston. And how can you not like that?